Hi, this is Nate, and today we're going to be reading Why Study History. So first, we're going to start off with reading some quotes from some famous people. So first off, John F. Kennedy said, History, after all, is the memory of a nation. Henry Ford said, History is more or less bunk. And at another time, the farther you look back, the farther you can see ahead. Cesario said, the first law for the historian is that he shall never dare utter an untruth. The second is that he shall suppress nothing that is true. Then we got Miguel de Cervantes. He said, it is one thing to write like a poet and another thing to write like a historian. The poet can tell or sing of things not as they were, but as they ought to have been, whereas the historian must describe them not as they ought to have been, but as they were, without exaggerating or hiding the truth in any way. Marcus Garvey said, A man without history is like a tree without roots. G. W. F. Hegel said, What experience and history teach is this, that people and governments never have learned anything from history, or acted on principles deduced from it. Then we got Juan Vives. He said, where there is history, children have transferred to them the advantages of old men. Where history is absent, old men are children. Mark Twain said, history never repeats itself. At best, it sometimes rhymes. The famous people quoted here don't agree about the importance or even the meaning of history. It would be boring if they did. But who should you agree with? And how do you come up with opinions of your own? Reading and listening will give you information to form your own ideas. Keeping an open mind will help make those opinions sound. So now we will start in the actual section. So, starting off, what's the point of studying history? Who cares what happened long ago? After all, aren't the people in history books dead? Those are good questions. They bother a lot of people. They bother some people so much that they never study history. That's too bad, because those people miss out on something very important, their own story. History is the story of U.S. It tells who we are and where we have been. Sometimes it is so surprising it jolts your mind. Here are a few answers to the questions about studying history. History is full of stories, true stories, the best ever. Those stories have been have real heroes and real villains. When you read history, you are reading about real life adventures. History is a mystery. No one knows what happened in the past. At least we don't know the whole story. We weren't there. Have you ever put a jigsaw puzzle together? That's what learning history is like. You gather pieces of information and try to discover how they fit. Suddenly, when you have enough pieces in place, you begin to see the big picture. That's exciting, and so is studying history, because new pieces of the puzzle keep fitting in. When we read about the mistakes people made in the past, we can try not to make them ourselves. Nations and people who don't study history sometimes repeat mistakes. History is especially important for Americans. In many nations, Japan or Sweden, for instance, most citizens share a common background. They have a similar look. They may worship in the same church. That isn't true of us. Some of us were once Chinese or Italian or Turkish or Ethiopian. Americans don't all look alike. Sometimes we don't think alike. But as Americans, we do share something. It is our history. We Americans share a common, her common heritage. If you are an American, then the Indians, the Vikings, the Pilgrims, and the slaves are all your ancestors. You will want to know their stories. Learning about our country's history will make you understand what it means to be an American. And being an American is a privilege. People all over the world wish that they, too, could be American. Why? Because we are a nation that is trying to be fair to all our citizens. That is unusual. Which brings me to this book's theme. It is this. I believe the United States of America is the most re remarkable nation that has ever existed. 
No other nation in the history of the world has ever provided so much freedom, so much justice, and so much opportunity to so many people. That is a big statement. You don't have to agree with it. Arguing with a book's theme is okay. Some people will tell you of evil forces in the United States. They will tell you of past horrors like slavery and war. They will tell of poverty and injustice today. They will be telling the truth. The United States isn't perfect. Far from it. Being fair to everyone in a large nation is very difficult. Do you treat everyone you know equally? How about people you don't like? The U.S. government has made some terrible mistakes. But usually this nation can and does correct its mistakes. That is because we are a democracy. Power belongs to the people, not the rulers. We are also a nation governed by law. Everyone, the president, congressmen, congresswomen, and you, lives by the same laws. Our top, or supreme, law is the Constitution. Even bad presidents and congresses obey the Constitution. They have to. They can be impeached, which means brought to trial if they don't. Our Constitution is part of what makes us so unusual. The Constitution of the United States was the first written Constitution in all of world history to attempt to treat each citizen equally. It begins with the words, we the people, You're, you are a part of the people. The Bill of Rights, another name for the first ten amendments to the Constitution, guarantees rights you wouldn't want to be without. It protects your right to worship as you wish, and it gives you the right to speak out and say or write what you want. You can criticize the government and not worry about being thrown into jail. That isn't true in some countries. When you say the Pledge of Allegiance, do you ever think about the meaning of the words with liberty and justice for all? Liberty is freedom, and you know what that is. But think what it might be, be like to live in a country where you are not free. In some countries, you are told what work you must do and where you must live. Justice is fairness. Having the same law for everyone is fair. The last words in the Pledge of Allegiance are for all. This is a nation that tries to offer opportunity for all. In the United States, you are free to do anything that anyone else can do. You can run for president, be an artist, write books, or build houses. The more you study history, the more you will realize that all nations are not the same. Some are better than others. Does that seem like an unfair thing to say? Maybe, but I believe it. I don't believe that people in one nation are better than those in another. Every nation has a mixture of good and bad people. So why, if people are the same, are nations different? Ideas have a lot to do with it. Nations stand on their ideas. We're lucky. The architects who designed this nation had sound ideas. They were looking for liberty, justice, and opportunity when they came here. They made sure the United States provided them. Then they did something never done before. They created a people's government. Some men and women in other parts of the world thought that was impossible. After all, it was an untried idea. But America's citizens proved that government by the people can work. How we did that is a fascinating story. That's the story of the U.S., the people of the United States, the story you're about to read. It's a history of the men and women and boys and girls who came to a strange land and made it their own. It's a story with heroes and villains and big ideas. We're going to continue that story with Americans on the move. Enjoy it. There's much to tell. So that was why study history. I hope you guys enjoy.